Uh, you mentioned dynamic systems theory. I'm not going to say briefly tell me, but okay. if you could uh, maybe elaborate on how you said that that kind of has influenced how you yeah. think about things. If you could elaborate on that. Okay. So a lot of people, the dynamic systems theory um, started in, actually probably started in the 70s, came of age more in the 80s. Um, and it, for a while it was called fuzzy math. Um, or uh, basically understanding how systems that move behave, that change. And, you know, a lot of people think of a system as just, you know, like if you think about how a kid grows over time. It's, it's change, and it will either go, you know, you kind of think of it as being linear, that it's like it stays a line is something that can be described by a particular equation and it stays basically the same as mm -hmm. time goes on. It has a slope. It's, you know, it's kind of like that. Um, something that's not linear might go like this. It might go like this. It might go like this. Um, it might be a big mess in like a ball of string. Um, and uh, most things are really not linear. Like if, even if you look at how a kid grows over time, there's periods where it goes like this, and there's other periods when it stays flat for a while. It doesn't usually go down, but you know it could if if yeah. if, if uh, you know you're talking about an adult who's dealing with osteoporosis, it goes down a little bit. So um, the ability of understanding that how that change occurs over time um, can actually be kind of a complex process. And there are some systems, a lot of systems, that not only, you know, say have an oscillation in them or some kind of change, or they're not what's called, um, uh, oh, the word's escaping me, but it always goes up in the same direction. Mm -hmm. um, but, but they actually behave in what's called a chaotic manner. And so what most people know of dynamic systems theory is what you usually called chaos theory. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and, um, and chaos is one kind of dynamically moving system. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of the most interesting. Um, and that's when you can start to understand kind of how all of nature works based on, um, you know, kind of um, coming up with some ideas about It's surprising how much um, relationship you can find across scales about how things behave. Uh, you know, for instance, one of the things that people have discovered is that um, a really important aspect of the way that nature behaves is the fractal. And a fractal is a, it's like a, it's almost like a little code for doing the same thing over and over again across different scales. And through that, you can get all kinds of different complexity of, it, of what you actually see in the outside world. So you can see a tree, for instance, as a classic fractal. You know, it goes up, and then it branches, and then each of the branches branches, and each of those little sub-branches branches. So you can have a relatively simple rule, um, you know, which just says branch every X period of time across scale, and you can come up with this amazingly complex fantastic object like a tree. And, you know, similar things happen about the way that water carves out um, streams and the way that um, mountains are created and the way that seashells are built and all of these kind of really beautiful underlying kind of mathematics where you have something that's very simple but that when it's repeated over scale you get a very functional, um, uh, you know, kind of highly complex object. And uh, it seems, in fact, that fractals are everywhere. And if you look at how galaxies are formed and how matter interacts on the smallest levels, you'll, you'll see fractals. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I believe that you actually also see that uh, because I was noticing you know, a lot of these kinds of uh, structures, um, sometimes when I was looking at animal behavior, I believe that it's also true that you can see it in human behavior. And um, so, you know, that's one aspect of dynamic systems theory which um, I think shows up in a really basic way in how people interact with the world. Um, and other aspects that people are sort of 
might be more familiar with is this idea of what's called the butterfly effect. So the idea is, you know, a small change in one area creates a larger change through being magnified. And, you know, the classic example was the butterfly flapping its wings in China, and then that affects wind currents and other places. Um, what actually is true is that the spaces in a system, I mean, most dynamic systems are not that way. It isn't really true that, you know, every butterfly that flaps its wings is going to affect the wind currents everywhere else. What is true is that there are specific parts of dynamic systems where that is true, where you can get these kind of significant effects from a relatively small change. And um, so coming, what's very cool is that when you, when you study a lot of this kind of stuff and then you do something like healing, um, and I'll talk more about this later, um, you can actually see how that same idea can be applied to a healing or therapeutic situation. Um, but the understanding of sort of how, um, let me just see if there's one other, one other, yeah, okay, so the third, the third thing that's probably really important about all this is the, um, what's called the attractor of a system. Um, and that's, in a way, it's like the rule under the fractal or um, some kind of underlying uh, it's almost like you could think of it as a as a magnet or something like that that's a, that's affecting the way that the system behaves and and and, and kind of um, forms a boundary to what it can do under a particular circumstance and um, it, you know that that maybe uh, you have um, a system that circles around a particular point but it doesn't go out over here. Um, unless something happens. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the interesting things about attractors is they're not always points. They can be non-linear themselves. So you can have what's called a strange attractor, which is um, a sort of an underlying structure in a system that uh, is itself kind of complex and non-linear.